So this is the third of our sessions on uh, specialist training methods and this session is going to be on HIT, specifically high intensity interval training. And it is, as it says, periods of high intensity work followed by periods of rest. That's just a key definition. And we, within this method of training, we are looking to work between 80 and 90% of maximum heart rate. Okay, so way above that aerobic training zone that perhaps you've used in the past. So it is quite a stressful method of training, something we need to pay due attention to a little bit later when we consider the evaluation process. But as always, I'm going to take you through a, an extended answer question type session so we understand and recognise the way in which we continue to structure these answers. So here's our what part, but in addition to that what part, we need to consider how it's set up. Now that's not how it works. When we talk about how it works, we're more, we are concerned with the physiological development that occurs because of that method of training. So here, this is a bit like the 30 days part of altitude training, the way in which you use bounding and jumping and hopping as it might be in plyometrics. So these next four things I'm going to look at is basically still the what section, but how it looks, how a, a hit session might look. And we need to take into account four aspects, as I've said. The first thing is duration of the work interval. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing, no surprise is, is the intensity of the work interval. The third thing, taking into account that definition, is the duration of recovery interval. Okay, that period of rest that we have in between work. And then finally, the number of repetitions. The number of work intervals and recovery intervals. So do not be lulled into thinking that you're now telling me how it works. This is still what it is, okay? It just, this is answering the question how it looks. You know, what is it? It's based around these four uh, key things here. So it could be along the lines of, as an example, uh, four 50 meter runs at three quarter pace with 20 seconds rest. That's simple and that just cases for everything. So that's what it looks like. So there's our what. So what about how it works? Well, it actually is seeking to develop the anaerobic system, beg your pardon, let me just spell that correctly, and potentially surprising, but it won't be in a bit, the aerobic energy systems. So it's looking, I'm crying out loud, I need to, to learn to spell today, I think, systems. Okay, so we're looking at both. So now in terms of how it works, you've got to be prepared then to recognise that there are physiological uh, benefits, physiological developments, beg your pardon, uh, from the anaerobic side as well as aerobic side. Okay, you want to look at both now. So, anaerobic. Well, first and foremost, we are looking to work at or above our lactate threshold. Now think about that for a second, because ultimately, remember, we are working at around 80 to 90% of our maximum heart rate. That means that the energy demands required at such intensity cannot possibly be met by the aerobic system. The cardiovascular system, the cardiorespiratory system cannot provide sufficient oxygen at that intensity to, to cater for the energy needs aerobically. So we are engaged in that anaerobic uh, system. Now it's important then that we are working above that lactate threshold, that we are really tempting the accumulation of lactic acid up to a point where it's being produced uh, way above that which can be removed, simply because that's how we seek to adapt. We're looking to make ourselves uncomfortable. So what are the type of benefits, the adaptations that are going to take place because we are working at this level? Well, first and foremost, consider the fact that it's maximal. So we're going to need real fast, immediate release of energy. So we're going to increase our PC stores. 
Okay, our, our PC stores actually increase within the cells that enable us then to cope with this maximal activity. And what those increase in PC stores allow us to do in part is begin to maintain this maximal activity for longer. That's the idea around here. So obviously, producing energy quickly, but producing maximal uh, effort for longer. And to benefit with this is that we increase efficiency of lactic acid system okay so that anaerobic system that engages after the eight to ten seconds of the ATP PC system so how does that work increasing efficiency but well, ultimately our system becomes more effective in removing lactic acid okay the more we tempt something the more we we work something the more efficient it becomes in doing its job. And at this point here, we actually create a buffering system. A buffering system of lactic acid. And that essentially delays in time through adaptation the lactate threshold. Okay, so we become more efficient in removing lactic acid once it's converted from pyruvate. We create that buffering system which kind of holds that lactate threshold at bay before inevitably it overtakes us. But all of this is designed to allow us to produce maximal activity for longer. That's that point. Okay, so there's the anaerobic system. So what about the aerobic system? Because I've already said that we cannot possibly meet the demands of energy required at such intensive uh, nature through the aerobic system. So how on earth can that happen? Well, actually, it does, and it happens primarily during the recovery phase. So we've worked hard during our actual work interval. Uh, we've worked at around 80 to 90 percent of maximum heart rate during our work interval. Okay, we are working above our lactate threshold, so we're really attempting to build the amount of lactic acid and our, and our uh, ability to deal with higher levels of lactic acid by becoming more efficient. But it's in our recovery that we can actually really improve our aerobic system, primarily to, to replenish certain systems so they're able to go again. So it will come as no shock to you if the last thing I wrote was delaying lactate, lactate threshold that we will increase our VO2 max. So how do we increase our VO2 max? Well, during recovery, we are literally gasping for air. Okay, we're going to be gasping for air at this point. So how do we do that? Well, actually, increased lung capacity. Now, that doesn't mean that lungs actually grow. But it means they begin, they begin to expand further. And that reveals more alveoli available for gas exchange. And hence, we can now deliver more oxygen into the bloodstream. The second sorry, I was concentrating so hard in making sure because I'm, my spelling's been awful below. It's cardiac hypertrophy. And that's when we see an increased size of the heart, but also an increased strength. Now, remember, the heart is surrounded by cardiac muscle, and that's no different to any other muscle. When it's worked hard and worked to capacity, the fibres grow thicker. They grow thicker and they grow stronger. And it now means that the heart can pump out more blood per beat when needed. So that really incurs naturally stroke volume, but also the ejection fraction, the proportion of blood that's being pumped from the heart in one beat. Now, remember, the heart is also getting bigger, which means it can hold more blood. So not only can it hold more blood, that we are pumping more blood out because it's more powerful. We're now delivering more oxygenated blood to the areas that need it. And in recovery, it's having the effect that we would normally see in the fast component that we talked about a couple of sessions ago. So we are replenishing PC stores, we're replenishing myoglobin stores. So all this is happening in the recovery element that hopefully would improve. And on top of that, to deliver it, we have to have increased capillarization. Okay, increasing the number of capillaries that are growing around and expanding around muscles to enable the greater amount of oxygen we are now able to deliver to the muscles to actually get there 
and to be of use. So this is how our VO2 max has increased. So that's how it works. So HIIT works in terms of anaerobic, but also through aerobic. So what are the benefits? Okay, so why would an athlete use HIIT? Well, we're going to stick primarily with a games player. Sorry, I'm just going to get rid of the top bit here to give me a bit more room. So let's think of the games player, because it is genuinely the most obvious one to use. And that's not saying they're the only ones. So sprinters, 200 meter runners, 400 meter runners use a lot of hit. Okay, a lot of hit. But games players for in this moment is easier for us to potentially comprehend because of what happens within that. So what about the anaerobic benefits? Well, at this point now, I can apply... Maximal intensity quicker and for longer. Okay, pretty vague. Okay, that's maybe anybody, but what about the games player? What could that be? So it means now that can react quickly and move to sprinting uh, very quickly in reaction to a certain situation. So um, a pass going astray, intercepting, uh, it could be jumping to catch, jumping to head also means that can be done for longer. So take the rugby player that making multiple tackles in a short space of time, the footballer that's running down the wing with the ball on a fast break, the centre in netball who's catching, jumping, catching, passing, taking the return, jumping, catching, passing in short intervals. This anaerobic improvement obviously benefits their, their performance. What about the aerobic one? Well, actually, it allows me to recover more quickly okay again really vague could be the same for anybody but what about specifically for a games player well it means after that run that actually they're ready and prepared to do the same again in a short space of time it's actually accelerating that fast component so replenishing those pc stores in a very short space of time when the ball goes out of play or it's at the other end of the um, other end of the court or the pitch or there's an injury or something along those lines that actually at this point that intake of oxygen because of increased hypertrophy increased lung capacity increased capillarization allows oxygen to be delivered to those areas to replenish pc stores to replenish myoglobin and actually prepare them for the next stage so a couple of weeks ago when we looked at recovery i talked about repeated sprint ability or asked you about repeated sprint ability and that's essentially what we mean it's the ability to repeat maximal activity in short spaces of time and games players absolutely rely on their own ability their body's ability to repeat maximal activity okay that jump the catch the pass the sprint into space to jump to catch to pass in netball okay the tackles that we talk about in rugby the amount of times they have to get up tackle again get up tackle again get up tackle again the footballer dribbling the footballer chasing the ball all these things are maximal activity but they can't just do it once they have to do it over and over and over again and this is where hit helps okay so that's the benefits remember the benefits but what about the possible drawbacks well remember this is high intensity so the issues the drawbacks are very very similar to those of plyometrics in the fact that you have to be very careful about how you apply this to certain individuals and if sedentary individuals or individuals that are untrained come to sessions such as this they could be in, in danger ultimately your heart is working at a high rate Blood pressure is very high. The pace at which blood is leaving the heart is very high. And if there are issues around fatty lipids that are congregated within the arteries around the aorta, the possible uh, effects of arteriosclerosis, arteriosclerosis can have obviously devastating effects on those individuals. So you must be very careful for people who are just starting. Equally, it has uh, a huge uh, load-bearing um, effect on muscles for example very similar to plyometrics you're working maximally again so good warm-ups good mobility good stretching programs before and after these sessions are absolutely critical to maintaining the health of those muscles and preventing tears uh, within those so those are those um, the, the possible um, issues around it and we've looked at the benefits and now you've got your what your how and your why